Holman Coliseum on the campus of the University of Alabama, site of the 1993 Southeastern Conference Women's Gymnastics Championships. Hello everyone, I'm Tim Brando, welcoming you to a March Madness of a different sort. Outside of the competitive level you see at the NCAAs, this may be the best group of athletes that you see competing in any gymnastics event across the country. Why? Well, take a look at the two top teams. Georgia ranks second in the country, and their chief rival, Alabama, is third. And as you look at the standings for all of the teams competing tonight, you'll notice that all six of them are in the nation's top 15. Joining me is Kathy Johnson, 1984 Olympic silver medalist. And Kathy, while we mention all these teams are outstanding, clearly the two that have emerged in the last 10 years have been Alabama and Georgia. Right now, though, Georgia does reign supreme. Tim, in terms of depth on every event, Georgia is certainly the strongest, and their credentials in the SEC speak for themselves. Four SEC team titles, including the last two in a row, seven All-American, four of which make up the S-Squad. First is 1988 Olympian Hope Spivey Sheely. As a freshman, she won the all-around national title and vault and floor. Heather Stepp won the NCAA vault title last year, and she's the defending SEC all-around champion, having won it two years in a row. Agena Simpkins, last season's SEC Freshman of the Year, and Lori Strong, member of the Canadian Olympic team in 1988 and 1992. She excels on the bars. Georgia's chief rival has been Alabama. It likely will come down to those two teams in the end. But in the last four dual meets, Georgia's won them all. But they are concerned, this Georgia team, because of one premier gymnast, and we're talking about Dee Foster. Dee Foster enters this competition ranked number one in the nation. As a freshman in 1990, she won three national titles, including the all-around, then led Alabama to the national title in 91. Alabama won the SECs in 1990, and Foster would like nothing more than to have a win here on her home floor. But this isn't a dual meet, and it's not just about upperclassmen. Some outstanding freshmen will be on display. Jennifer Wood of LSU is also a member of the Canadian Olympic team, with vault being her most impressive event. One of the most highly recruited freshmen was Jenny Hansen, who surprised everyone when she opted for Kentucky. She's ranked fourth and can certainly go head-to-head -head with Dee Foster and Georgia's Esquire. Are you ready for the first rotation? Sure. We'll get to it. It's the ninth Southeastern Conference Women's Gymnastics Championship. It's coming at you next. Some people will only go to Texas. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa Coleman Coliseum as we get ready for the SEC Women's Gymnastics Championships. The first two rotations look this way. LSU will be on the vault, Alabama the uneven bars, Kentucky the balance beam, and Florex will be Florida, Georgia, LSU, Auburn, and Kentucky in the second rotation. As we look to the third, and as you look at the rest of the first four rotations, remember that there are buys for two teams in each of the rotations. It will be Auburn and Georgia with the buy in the first rotation. Alabama and Florida get buys in the second rotation. Here is Dana Dobranski on the uneven bars as we get underway. Senior from Sterling Heights, Michigan. Her career best mark, 9.90. She hit that twice this season, including the team's dual meet, the first dual meet that she participated in. And this is a great event for Alabama to start on. Keep in mind that every team can drop one low score on each event. And so far, their low score is a 9.55. Dana is 5'6", which is very tall for a gymnast. She works the unevens very well and takes advantage of kind of the new rules of bars. They go out much farther than they used to. Gives her a lot more swing room. Very nice landing for her. She entered the championships, ranked 17th in the nation in the uneven bars. Their scores so far range from 9'7 to 9'9, if they can drop that low score of 9'5'5". Dana's score... 9.80 for Dana Dobranski. I really think it's going to take well over nine weeks to win this team title. Now Jennifer Wood on the vault, the heralded freshman bronze medalist in the vault in the 91 Pan American Games, competed in Barcelona for the Canadian Olympic team. This is definitely her strongest event. Very dynamic. Handspring front with a half twist. And not only is it dynamic, she's very clean in the air. Her tuck is tight, toes pointed, legs together. So really, there are very, very few deductions in this vault. Now she's recognized around the world as one of the top vaulters. Tied 
individual LSU record on the vault with a 9.90 against Auburn earlier this year. D.D. Bro Pollock, her coach, counseling her there. And her score, 9.85 on the first vault. Which will help LSU a lot. Their scores range from 9.4 to 9.75. She's performing the same vault again. Gymnast performed two vaults, but only the better score counts. And the score on the second vault for Jenny Hansen, 9.85, which will raise LSU's number as a team to 48-30 after the vault. Now another freshman on display, Jenny Hansen getting ready for the balance beam. Her coach, Leah Little, talked about the impact that she's had on her program. I think what Jenny adds to the program is, I've told other media people that she's like the turbocharger on your motor. You know, she's that one athlete that gives you all, all the time, gives you 100% in practice. She practices like she competes. And uh, we have another a freshman, Jennifer Van Aller, that's also uh, works very hard. And we call the freshmen over in the very beginning of the, se of the season and tell them, make the other guys come to you. You keep doing what you're doing and make them come to your level. And that's exactly what's happened. And uh, if Jenny was to go out and, and score a 10 in every event, if the other guys weren't doing their job, we don't have the total program. But she gives that little boost uh, of energy, excitement, and to, for the other kids to look at her as a as a leader, as somebody to look up to skill level, and they say, this is the level, we have a leader, we have somebody that can lead us to the promised land, so to speak, and it really does make a difference having an athlete of that caliber. Definitely a candidate for the all-around title. Here she is. And Kentucky is starting on balance beam, which is often considered the toughest event to start on, difficult to control the adrenaline. I would have to, say, have to say so, particularly since she's a freshman. This is her first big collegiate gymnastics competition. Attended Somerset High School, captured the all-around title there in 1990, so staying close to home. Nice leap sequence there. really in a position to help her team out. Their scores range from 9.15 to 9.55. This is not particularly her strong suit either. Beautiful pass, very difficult. A back handspring to a half turn split jump. It's a very risky move. Front tuck, very similar to her mount. Your dismount, round off, double full. Very nice landing. She's got to be pleased with that. Born in St. Paul, Minnesota, Jenny Lucille Hansen. And they're happy for her. This was her first pass on the balance beam, her most difficult tumbling run. It's two layout step outs in a row. You quite often see that at the elite level competition at the Olympics and World Championships. So a nice level of difficulty. Wow, that is a nice score for her. And now Lynette Whitmire, Florida, in floor exercise, senior from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Florida has a new coach, Judy Abner. He was the coach at Penn State for 18 years before she took this position. She's really trying to build up the program and particularly working on their fitness level, getting in conditioners and strength coaches.
tumbling run uh, leading to what was a very clean routine. And Florida needs this. They have scores ranging from the low to mid nines, and they really need some higher nine scores. Team is happy for her. She had an outstanding NCAA championship in 89, now returning to all-around competition. During her junior season, Lynette Whitmire trying to give Florida a chance at making a run at both Georgia and Alabama. Her score, 9.75 in floor exercise for Lynette Whitmire. Now that brings us to Dee Foster of Alabama on the uneven bars, the only gymnast in NCAA history to win 13 All-American honors, scored a perfect 10 on the uneven bars against LSU earlier this year. Alabama has been doing extremely well over here. Low score of 9.55. And if Dee can hit a routine, they'll be able to drop that score and count all their scores well above 9.7. She's very aggressive on this event. She hits every route, every position. Great handstand. Nice release move. Way up above the bar. Is her dismount? Tuck double back and a great landing. Oh, she stuck it and her teammates know it. Dee Foster from Huntsville, Alabama in her senior year did not get to finish the SEC championships due to injury last season, trying to punctuate her career for Alabama. Better up for the Ford League leader sellout. In gymnastics, uh, you have to stay up for six weeks. There's six weeks of championship uh, uh, season. You know, there's the SECs, and then two weeks later, regionals, and two weeks later, the nationals. And in no other sport does a team have to stay mentally strong and physically ready for a six-week period with no downtime. And that's very difficult when you're talking about athletes at the caliber that we have at the SEC championships. They're very intense. And so it's difficult to keep that intensity. So really what we've done this year is really put our emphasis on the SEC championships and the nationals national championships with downtime around the regionals and for that we just be, we just feel that we have some cushion we have some room for error in the regionals that we can you know not perform at our best and still qualify to the NCAAs you're talking about a different level when you talk about Georgia gymnastics and Suzanne Yachlin and the job that she has done and uh, here's some of that depth in the form of Sandy Roulette deal handspring front vault very dynamic look at the distance and height she got from the horse Fortunately, she took a pretty big step. That'll be a significant deduction. 9.75, relatively surprising score. Not quite as significant a deduction as I thought it would be. Generally, you do see in collegiate gymnastics uh, a little more freedom with respect to error where the judging is concerned, don't you? I just think the scores tend to be a little bit higher because they keep it all relative. In collegiate gymnastics, these are the best gymnasts and they score the best scores. She's performing the same vault again. It's a handspring front. And she wants the same dynamics. Good speed and good power. And hopefully stick the landing. Oh, she did it in pike position. Made it much more difficult. That vault was worth a 10.0 in the code of points. The other vault was worth a 9.0. So just by virtue of it being a higher level vault, it can score better. So 9.90 in her second attempt. And now here's Elizabeth Wilson, 1991 SEC co-champion on the uneven bars out of Springfield, Virginia for D.D. Pollock's team. This is definitely her best event. She's the co-champion in 1991 at the SECs. Good landing. Not quite as powerful as Dee Foster that we saw on the uneven bars. She showed a nice combination of different types of skills in the routine. She began the season with a hyper-extended elbow, limiting her to only two events during the regular season. There you see her score, 9.85, and Coach Pollock and uh, her teammates very happy with that. Now, Heather Stepp of Georgia on the vault. So far, Georgia is averaging over a 9.8 on the vault. Extraordinary scores here. Hansman front pike with a half twist. Excellent vault. Just that big step on the landing. Right. Certainly cost her. Trying to defend her vault title. 
averaging 9.89 on the vault this year. Did have 110 against BYU uh, just uh, about a month ago at Brigham Young. They really have an excellent vaulting group here. As I said, they're averaging over a 9.8 right now with still Hope Spivey Sheely to come, who's also an excellent vaulter. She's out of Mount Clements, Michigan, Sterling Heights High School there. Trying to improve on the landing on her second ball. Oh, she changed the ball. Handspring front pike. It's still worth a 10.0. And what's really strange about this, this is a harder ball to land than the first one because you can't see the mat. You just have to feel the landing. I'd say she was in step with that uh, landing, wouldn't you? Absolutely. We're at Coleman Coliseum in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Tim Brando along with Kathy Johnson. Happy to have you with us. Hope Spivey Sheely, recently married on the vault. Handspring front with a half twist in tuck position. You'll notice that she was quite a bit off center. She traveled to her right. And that'll be a deduction for the direction. Scored a 9.8 on her first vault. She really needs to try and straighten up that vault. Now, most of these gymnasts are performing two different vaults in preparation for the nationals and event finals where they have to do two different vaults and they average the two vaults. Here, they can do the same vault twice if they'd like and the best score counts. Much better. She's still a little bit off in the direction. That might be hard for the judges to see, especially when they were blinded by that stuck landing. And the youngster from Salford, Virginia, very pleased with that score and that landing you just mentioned, Kathy. 9.95, her score. The third rotation is coming up next from Tuscaloosa. The 1993 SEC Women's Gymnastics Championships continue. Tim Brando along with Kathy Johnson. Happy to have you with us. And the Canadian influence, uh, they have been flying to the south. And obviously, we're talking a lot about Olympic competitors such as this one, Lori Strong. Well, Ernestine Weaver, the former coach of Florida, really started that migration. She began recruiting Canadians many, many years ago. Now watch this skill right there. It's a four and a half twist over the low bar. That is named after this gymnast, Lori Strong. It's called the Strong Move. Lori actually was a finalist at the World Championships, the individual event championships in Paris. Pike double back this now, a very difficult routine. Here's that skill. Watch the one and a half twist right there to a regress. Very difficult to make the regress and then get your legs in position to swing on the low bar. Suzanne Yachlin uh, yelling yes, yes for that score. And they've got it 9.95 to go along with three other nine nines by other competitors from Georgia. They're in great shape. There is Robert Dillard in his eighth season at Auburn, looking at one of his fine freshmen, Becky Irwin, ranked 12th in the NCAA in Floor X. And Auburn and LSU really have a tight competition going for third place. Full twisting double back, beautiful. Pike position. He's a very powerful tumbler. Out of Pasadena, Texas. Really one of the reasons that Auburn finished with a 10 and 5 record entering the championships and a number three seed. like another one of those clean performances to this point. Nice combination of choreography and good tumbling. Here's her final pass. Another double back. Great level of difficulty in this routine. And that's going to be important. They have a low score of 9-2 that they would like to drop. She won the all-around title at the 92 Canadian Invitational. There she is, Becky Irwin.
And you mentioned that uh, tight competition for third place between Auburn and LSU. They'll be happy with this score. 9.90 for Becky Irwin. Now we move on to Heather Stepp of Georgia. And this is a terrific bar team. They are ranked second nationally on this event. She has scored tens on this apparatus before. Beautiful routine. Oh, and the step on the landing. That will be a slight deduction. This could very well be the highest scoring event of the night for Georgia, for any team here. Other teammates have already scored well, and Heather Stepp has a 9.90. So another good score for Georgia. Dee Foster knows about this rivalry. We, look, we always look forward to being up against Georgia, and um, we hope that they look forward to being up against us because I think it's a challenge for both teams involved, no matter what anybody says before or after, no matter what the result. Um, they know we're tough, and we know they're tough, and that's all that matters. This may be one of her weakest events, Kathy, but they need to score well on the balance beam. It's hard to say Dee has a weak, weak event. I'd say her other three are stronger. Needless to say, if she's going to win the all-around, she needs to score well in this routine. And mind Jenny Hansen already scored a 9.85 on this event, so it's put some pressure on all the other contenders in the all around. The one thing that competing in collegiate gymnastics has done for these gymnasts prior to starting their collegiate career, they didn't compete as often. In college, they compete sometimes every weekend or every other weekend in, in their dual competitions, and they get so much more consistent on this event doing that. Tuck double back, excellent dismount. Just that one step on the landing, everything else is very, very solid. The first gymnast in NCAA history to accomplish 13 All-America honors in a career Dee Foster, very pleased with that routine. It's a 9.85 for her as the rivalry continues between Georgia and Alabama. After three rotations, the top two where you'd expect them to be. And there's a look at the all-around. Coming up next month, all the fun, all the sun, all the sizzling action found in one month's prelude to summer. Headlining May. Back in Coleman Coliseum in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Tim Brando, Kathy Johnson, happy to have you with us. First-year coach Judy Abner making the move over from Penn State to Florida. I've been open-minded, and I've learned a lot this year. It's been great for me. Um, you know, this is such a wonderful conference and so strongly competitive that there's certainly that um, the challenge that's inherent in the conference to be successful and to, you know, to try to beat these teams. But I've, I've been in a, a unique position because for me, I don't think anybody expects anything of me yet. You know, I think it's hard to really make a huge impact your first year. And so for me, I, I you know, I've been dealt a certain hand and I'm trying to do my, my best at playing that hand, but I don't feel this, um, huge pressure to do well and to prove myself and things like that. After 18 years of success at Penn State, she shouldn't feel that pressure. Amy Meyerson, perhaps, though, a little sweaty palm or two as a freshman competing in her first SEC gymnastics competition on the uneven bars. Well, she has a lot of experience competing at the elite level from 1988 to 91 before her collegiate career. Her career best, 9.80 on the uneven bars. Solid routine for Florida. 1991 Peachtree Classic all-around champion, Amy Meyerson from West Hartford, Connecticut. They anticipate the score. Florida just happy to be in this competition at this level. 
after one year under their new coach 9.80 that score and here's Jenny Hansen again from Kentucky ranked second in the vault in the NCAAs beautiful vault handspring front with a half twist we've seen several of them throughout the competition she came up with a great landing three perfect tens for her on the vault this year and in her first attempt here 9.90 last one coming just three weeks ago against Northern Illinois. So far in the all-around, she is doing very well. She has a pair of 985s. Balance beam and floor exercise. Quite a coming out party, wouldn't you say? And this is her best event. She's very, very powerful. You can see it in her run, in her explosiveness off the horse. second ball. She repeats the same ball. It's even better. The landing was just more secure, though. She didn't move her feet on the first landing. This one was... There it is. There it is. A perfect 10. Her fourth of the year. And there's D.D. Pollock, head coach at LSU for 16 years. Building a program from the ground up native of the Bayou State, and here is Jennifer Wood of LSU, another outstanding freshman in the SEC on the beam. Now, I don't think we've seen this many freshmen come on so strong so quickly at the collegiate level. It usually takes them a couple of years to adjust to college life and collegiate competition. Jennifer has competed at the Olympic Games and at World Championships, so she's very experienced in dealing with high-level pressure. Really gives instant credibility to the LSU program simply having her on their roster. Her career best, 9-7-0. Actually, her season best. 970 on this event. Nice original move there. What's nice to see is that in a sport that in the Olympics you're 14 and 15 years old, that these gymnasts continue to get better and better in their late teens and early 20s at the college level. Tuck double back dismount. Very difficult routine. And again, as we mentioned, LSU battling it out with Auburn for third place in the team competition. They are very pleased with that performance by Jennifer on the balance beam. Her score, 9.80, and that is a career high. As we mentioned, her season best had been 9.70 prior to that performance. And once again, Dee Foster ranked second in Florex, a 9.95 average. This should be quite a show. She is always very entertaining in this event. In fact, the entire Alabama team usually has very entertaining floor routines. Beautiful double pipe. Notice how she laid out into that first somersault. Whip back all the way through to a tuck double back. Nice difficulty. It's a great opportunity for her. She was injured, did not finish this meet a year, a year ago, but she won this particular event, this apparatus, in 91 at uh, Lexington.
performance and an opportunity at uh, making up for some lost ground after that ankle injury last year. Dee Foster, oh, the embrace. She knows she has a good score, and she does. 9.95, that is good enough to tie her for first place. And as we look at the all-around, so far, no surprises. She's tied with Jenny Hansen. The 1993 SEC Women's Gymnastics Championships continue, and Georgia trying to defend their title, looking for some help from some of their youth movement. Suzanne Yachlin looks on at one of her pupils, sophomore Nika Logan on the balance beam. And I think I know what she was thinking. This is an important routine for Georgia. Nika was much more consistent on beam last season, but she is very capable of the big score. Yes, yeah, she is co-champion of the balance beam a year ago in the SECs with a 9.90. Watch this tumbling pass. Round off, back handspring, layout. Very difficult and well done. We've seen several beam routines in this competition and they've all had enough difficulty in the routine for the routine to be scored from a 10.0, but hers has much more difficulty. Unfortunately, you don't get extra credit for that. From a team standpoint, too, they, they need her to perform well on this apparatus to stave off Alabama. Beautiful flexibility. Nice control. because of their excellent work on the uneven bars, but they still need to keep the pressure on Alabama. Tying a career high for a 9.90. And now Jenny Hansen getting ready for the uneven bars. This is her last apparatus in this SEC championship. Chucky isn't in any position to move up, but this is Jenny's chance to secure her, her position. Kentucky gets a bye in the sixth rotation, so obviously she needs to go for it and will. Also, you keep in mind, Dee Foster is headed to her best event of mm -hmm. all. So this is going to come down to the very last event. There's her release move. A quick catch. Her dismount, full twisting double back. The only one we've seen in this competition. Very high level of difficulty. Again, to remind you, just 19 years old, you have to understand the moment and how it feels for her at this time. Here's her release move. It's a front flip catch. One judge gave her a 10. Her overall score a 9.95. Great score for Jenny Hansen. Now Heather Stepp on the balance beam. This is Heather's weakest event in terms of consistency. She's had a couple of trouble times this season on this event. Nice pass. Back handspring to a layout step out, and then she tumbled out of the layout into another back handspring. As a matter of fact, she's coming off her worst performance of the season at home in the Bulldog Invitational. She only scored 9.30 on the beam. has a pair of nine nines 
in the all around. So she's right up there with Jenny Hansen and Dee Fossey. been a very difficult routine for her on the beam. That means a lot, doesn't it, Kathy, to come back in, a, in an event as important as this and perform well. That number certainly means a lot to this Georgia team, but perhaps more specifically to her. Now Hope Spivey Sheely on balance beam. Scored a season high 9.90 in the last two meets, so we should see an outstanding performance here from her. She's averaged over a 9.7 all season long, so she's been very consistent. With a good routine here, Georgia will be back on top. and clear all her movements are. Very aggressive on the landing. Cannot give away any balance break. Tuck back to a kick out. Swing down. Hope competed in the 1988 Olympic Games for the U.S. Use her dismount. Round off double back. Georgia does a nice level of difficulty on all the events. Is that what sets them apart, Kathy? It really is, and in the past it's been risky for them because it's, it's kind of a hit or miss situation. If you throw all those hard skills, it's much easier to miss one of them. But it's really starting to pay off for them. And there you see their score, 9.85. It's a whole different level of competition. Competition within for this Georgia team, going after a third straight SEC title. and you're not. CC championships in gymnastics. As you look at the team scoring, LSU and Kentucky have completed all of the apparatus. So Georgia actually looking very good for defending their crown. And Jenny Hansen, Jennifer Wood, Dee Foster, Heather Stepp, all right there in the individual all around. Marty Watson now of Alabama on the ball. Sukahara with a full twist in tuck position. One of the more difficult balls being done. This is the only apparatus that she competes in on a regular basis and the only apparatus that uh, she's competed in tonight. A little more pressure on her to, to perform uh, because of that fact. There's her score, 9.70 in her first attempt. And that ball is worth a 9.9, .9, so that's what it was judged from. She's a pretty consistent 9.5 to 9.7 vaulter. She's done very, very well. They have a little bit of pressure here since they have a score of 9.05 that they'd like to drop. So they really need to finish up with some high scores in this rotation. The first vault was really better. Mm -hmm. Took a step on that landing, so I'm sure the first score will be the highest of the two, and that's the one she'll take. Yeah, her second score 9.60 so they'll keep the 9.70 and that itself will certainly help as you look at Agina Simpkins the sophomore ranked number 10 in NCAA in floor exercise Agina will do this performance to Michael Jackson's jam and this is a crowd pleaser <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Bolingbrook, Illinois. Well choreographed. Simpkins, the 1992 SEC Freshman of the Year, not suffering a sophomore slump by any means in the Florex. She's having a great all-around competition as well. She scored a 9-9 on bars. What's the power in her tumbling? This was her final tumbling round, a front flip through to a full twist and a punch one and a quarter to her stomach. Given that performance, that should pretty much sew up the team title once again for Georgia. As they look for a score, and there it is at 9.90. You see, even her teammates are disappointed. Oh, the collegiate crowds are so accustomed to 10-0s, they forget a 9-9 is a great score. Back in a moment. The standings after five-plus rotations, and as we mentioned going to break, Georgia looking great because they have not competed in as many as LSU and Kentucky. Here is Kim Kelly, freshman from Prussia, Pennsylvania. Alabama has two great vaulters closing out this lineup. Kim Kelly doing a handspring front vault. That's worth a 9.9 .9 in the code of points. And then, of course, to follow her, Dee Foster. Alabama really needs some big scores. If they want to catch Georgia, you're absolutely right. 9.80 on her first vault. They're really not in a position to. They'd have to count on Georgia making a mistake. Handspring pike front. Oh, much more difficult vault, but trouble with the rotation on that vault and, of course, the landing. So she'll take that first vault score. 9.80 will be her official score. And here is Hope Spivey Sheely on to defend her SEC Florex championship. Scored a 10 in last year's championships and is ranked number one in the NCAA this season. She has scored very well throughout this competition, but she can't place in the all-around because she didn't compete on the uneven bars. She is a very powerful tumbler. Watch this pass. Front, tuck, all the way through to a full twisting double back. full twisting double backs being done in collegiate gymnastics and she does a front flip to go into it another full twisting double back now i believe i'm positive that's the first time i've seen it done in collegiate gymnastics twice in the same routine she became just the fifth collegiate gymnast in history to post a perfect 10-0 in floor exercises. Here's her final tumbling run. Tuck, double back. Probably the most difficult routine being done in the competition on any event. There's her husband, Dale Sheely Jr., a graphic artist for a real estate company. Keeps a couple of jobs while the 88 U.S. Olympian continues to compete. She's very happy with her performance, and well, she should be. Her score, there it is, another perfect 10 for Hope Spivey Sheely. <laughs> Georgia can feel it, can't they? Dee Foster, how she would like to be remembered at Alabama. An unselfish contributor, I think is how I want to be remembered by um, mainly the small circle of, of athletics here at the university. Um, of course, by my teammates, the ones that I have now and the ones that are to come later. I want everyone to, um, if they ever talk about me, I want them to, to explain that I was a person that, that had to make the transition from being an individual gymnast to a team gymnast, and, and it was a very... Um, 
hard thing for me to understand and accomplish, but I did it. And um, I think that was the turning point in my gymnastics career when I made that decision to be a team player. She'll need a 9.95 to tie Jenny Hansen for the all-around title. This is her last performance at Coleman Coliseum. Hike front somersault, beautiful vault just to hop on the landing. And I have to say, I've known Dee for a long time, since she was an elite gymnast and competed as an individual. And a lot of growth there. It's what being an athlete is all about. Alabama is not in a position to move ahead of Georgia, but Dee is certainly in a position to go for that top spot. Needs a 9.95 to tie Jenny Hansen for the lead, for the win. The look of a focused athlete realizing that this is her last gasp at home at the collegiate level. Same ball, no, Pike front with a half twist. Hey, a bold move, wouldn't you say, changing it up? No, I'm impressed. These gymnasts have become much more bold in their gymnastics and in competition. And the embrace, the hugs, which are very much a part of this sport, and her last score ever at Alabama, just the score she needed to capture her share of the all-around. Hope you enjoyed the 1993 SEC Women's Gymnastics Championships. The results in the all-around. Jenny Hansen of Kentucky and Dee Foster of Alabama tie at 39.65. And in the team competition, Georgia and Alabama get at the very top a third straight SEC title for Georgia. Kathy Johnson, your impressions? I think this sets up a great competition to come at the national championships coming up. And Georgia and Alabama can both set their sights on the defending champs, Utah. For Kathy Johnson, Tim Brando saying so long from Tuscaloosa.